Uh, one man, our next guest, who has been embedded in the McGregor camp from the get-go. Uh, private planes, the stage for uh, the the world tour, every step of the way on, on, on this journey, the training camp, the sparring sessions. In fact, it, it was his fault that the whole Pali Malinaji thing became the the uh, the shitstorm that it became, uh, is our next guest. Our next guest is a young man by the name of David Fogarty. And in fact, this is his second time on the program. As I said at the top of the show, uh, he was on many moons ago. I didn't even know this until he reminded me of it back at the McGregor Open Workout Session two weeks ago in Las Vegas. He is in Las Vegas now, of course. He is Conor McGregor's personal photographer. He is the photographer over at themaclife.com, also has done work for severemma.com. He is Yogurty Dave Fogarty, and he joins us on the phone right now. Dave, are you there? Hi, how's it going, Ariel? How's things? Dave, it is a pleasure. We've sat next to each other in the media room and things of that nature. Never thought that you'd be an actual guest on the program, but here we are. This fight is so big that even you're getting the rub. <laughs> yeah, that's how big it is. Even, even I'm getting a little bit of air time. <laughs> okay, now let's clear something up. You told me uh, a, a little less than two weeks ago that you were actually on the show. You called in um, a few years back this program, and you have a crazy story about why you called in. Can you tell us, can you remind the audience about your first appearance on the program? Yeah, the first, the first time I was on the show was after uh, UFC in London when Henninburg out for uh, Michael McDonald after he beat him for the... Uh, the interim uh, bantamweight title. So Dana White was in Ireland doing a Q and A, and I just asked him because I put the belt on Henan Barrow if he won, and he said yes. So he gave me a ringside seat. So I got to go in the octagon uh, at the end of the fight and uh, present Henan Barrow with his belt. That's so crazy. Technically, yes, I was in I was in the octagon before Conor with a UFC belt. But look, that's we right. We won't get caught up in the fact. So you're actually the second Irishman to step foot inside the octagon. Yeah, I'm I'm the second. Connor's the third. That's right. That's right. Tom Egan number one. Then it's number number two. You. That's incredible. And so you just got up there and got on the mic, and he said yes, and that was it. You were. If I go back on, you know, on Fight Pass and watch this, you, the the the, the pasty Irish fellow, is the one who's actually putting the belt around him. Yeah, I was in there, dapper up to the nines, nice suit on. So I I, I introduced. The nice suits as well, so you know, I kind of copied a lot of a lot of stuff from my swag. But we'll we'll let him away with it. Fair enough. Um, how did you get this gig, being essentially his personal photographer? Uh, well, like you said, I uh, I'm the photographer for the MacLives dot com, so uh, I've been doing a lot of work for them. Um, I'd kind of kind of I'd done a lot of stuff in the Irish scene, a lot of the amateur shows. I worked for Bama, the promotion. So he kind of seen my stuff before. He he kind of knew that I I fought as well. He. He liked he liked my he liked my style of photography. He um, he knew I understood the sport, so he just he'd asked me a few times to come down and just photograph a few of his sessions and stuff. And then I think he realised what a momentous occasion this was going to be. Where he's going to he's going to be the, the one give the uh, give the one on Floyd Mayweather's record. So I think he wanted the whole camp like um, photographed and just so he could have him for himself and to show his his son when when they're growing up and just make sure his. Uh, his Instagram was on point, so he just asked me to come down for the first session of the camp, and I said, of course, and then I, I did every session, and then he just asked me to come on the world tour with him, and he asked me to come to Vegas with him, so I just said yes to everything, so I've just been uh, along for this, this whirlwind experience, so it's been, I'm over the moon about it, I, I'm having the time of my life out here. Has it exceeded your expectations? I'm sure you had some kind of idea how crazy it would be, but now that it's almost wrapping up, what's it been like? Yeah, it's it is. It's been crazy. It's definitely exceeded my expectations. Just watching, watching the whole the whole camp, watching how from the first session to to his first sparring session to his last sparring session, just seeing just the progression, just seeing how how much sharper he's gotten, just just everything that's gone along with it. It's just it's it's just been amazing, and just to be able to say it was part of of history, and I got to I got to be here for this camp is is something I never thought would happen, and and uh, yeah, it's just been amazing. In particular, the, the world tour, going from city to city on the private plane, being on the stage. There was even a point I remember in Brooklyn where I think you and Floyd kind of got into it together, right? Didn't he say something to you and you kind of said something back to him? What, 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 a, what happened there? And B, just experiencing all of that at the beginning of this journey, what was that like? Yeah, in, in Brooklyn was, uh, was probably the maddest. So I was, I was just take, taking pictures. Um, me and Connor talked about about doing the book and stuff from from this from this whole camp. So I was just trying to get as many photographs as I could. Just and then uh, so Floyd was walking towards me and he was talking. He was kind of looking down. So I thought, uh, if I get down low and look up, this would be this would be a nice photograph. 
So I took it and then he, he got in my face and he goes, yeah, I take a picture of greatness. And I kind of froze. I got, <laughs> let the moment get to me. I should have just turned around and taken a picture of Connor, but I told him I was all right and I didn't want to take a picture. So he, he kind of got in my face and he goes, fuck you. And then I go, get the fuck out of my face. So that was, that was, that was my, my claim to fame at the time. But uh, yeah, I probably let the moment get to me a bit. <laughs> Um, after the, yeah, that's right. I, I would, I would say so. Um, after this fight is over, like come Sunday, do you just go back home and is it going to be hard to go back to regular life? Because I'm, I'm assuming this has just been, I mean, this has been a whirlwind, right? I mean, you're waking up, you're a part of this historic event. What is that going to be like? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be nice to get back home. I've been, been away now for like seven weeks. So it'd be nice, it'd be nice to get back to reality, go back to, to get back into a routine and, Back to back to normal life, but it's going to be it's going to be a lot different than Ireland is a lot different than living out in Vegas for seven weeks. With uh, so like we're living in the coach's house. We have we've everyone here, all the the usual names: Owen Roddy, uh, Arthur Lobos here, John Cavan is here, the great Jerry Byrne of Jerry Byrne eighty eight on Instagram. They'll kill yes. me if I don't give him that. that yes, plug. that's right. So it's going to be it's it's going to be crazy to to go back, but um, it's just it's it's going to be mad. The whole world, it's, nothing's going to be the same after this. It's going to knock. He's going to not Floyd out in under four rounds, and and then to have those photographs and to be part of the camp, to have to go back to normal life, is going to be a bit of a shock. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting home. Uh, so it was your photos that kind of started the Paulie Malignaggi storm, <laughs> um, the, the 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 knockdown and all that stuff. Um, and just looking at you know the the reaction to the photos and the likes and the retweets and stuff like that, uh, you were in the middle of it. And and as I noted last week, it wasn't Connor who posted the photos; you posted the photos. I'm assuming you didn't go rogue and do that without you know any sort of word from the man himself to go out and do this. But to be the one you know kind of receiving all of those message messages was that was that suffocating? How, how did you handle all of that? Uh, I, I was grand. Most of the most of the hate messages came on Twitter, and I don't really go on Twitter, so I just go on every few days and look at them and, and just laugh to myself at the things people were saying. And I just I just found very funny. But the photos, a photo is a photo. I didn't Photoshop it. I didn't take it out of context. It was what it was. Kind of knocked him down. I, I got a photograph of it. Paulie went out and did all his interviews, talked about, said all the things that he said. I kind of didn't have it, this oh my god power. So I thought, well, I. I have proof here that he does have this oh my god power. So I thought, you know, this would be a good opportunity. We'll put the, the critics to bed, we'll, we'll silence Paul, he just, we'll just put it out there. So I, uh, I just put it out, I just put it out on Twitter. What did you make of the things that Paulie said about the way he was treated and, you know, the living conditions, the way the other sparring partners, I know you're not a sparring partner per se, but did you feel like he was embellishing? Did you feel like he wasn't telling the truth from your perspective, the way you have been treated? Did this not vibe with what Paulie was saying? Yeah, I don't know where Paulie was coming from. The the living conditions out here are, are amazing. They, it, unfortunately, the Skype wouldn't work. We had a problem there. So, but I'm I'm here. We have a, a six bedroom bedroom home. We're sitting here by our pool. We have jacuzzi. It was actually two jacuzzis. So we get our, our meals are provided for us. Anything that we, we 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 could possibly need is provided to us. Everyone is is just so so nice and accommodating to us. The USDPI has been amazing to us. They've opened up their doors. They've even let like myself, the training partners, we we're allowed to use the facilities. So I thought Paulie was just I think he was licking his wounds a bit, trying to uh, trying to find something to uh trying to find something to bring to bring the, the reputation of the camp down. So he just he was looking at things that couldn't immediately be disproved by saying, Oh, the living conditions are, t- are terrible. But Paulie was offered his his accommodation. He he chose to stay with the, the sparring partners, he stayed in the sparring partners' house. There's all the other sparring partners have no problem with it. They they all they're all happy with where they are. So I think it was just Paulie looking to lick his wounds a bit and uh, and uh, take the reputation of the camp down a small bit. But uh, he can say whatever he wants. He can he can embellish embellish whatever he wants. If he if he think, thought it was a push down, it just goes to show how just goes to show how how strong the shot landed. That if he thought that he got pushed down and he, did, he doesn't even remember getting knocked down, then it just goes goes to show. So. I don't know where he's coming from, but I'm, the living conditions out here are, are great. The, we've been treated amazing by everyone. Everything has, has been looked after for us. So I don't know where he's coming from with, with those comments. Have you been surprised with anything as far as this experience is concerned? Uh, the way Connor looked in, in training, in sparring, things of that nature. Anything, you know, sort of what you say to yourself, wow, I did not expect this? Um, no, I, kind of going into this, I knew, I, I knew I'm kind of like, I've been, I've been around him for, a few years now. This is the first time I've, I've covered his whole camp, but I've seen him. I've seen him train. I was there for the Diaz one um, fight. I was there for for the second Diaz fight. So I've I've seen him, and I've seen how quickly he picks up. He picks up the um, 
How quickly he, he's just laser focused. Whatever he sets his mind to, he just goes out and does. If someone told me he was going to go do tennis, then I would, I'd be like, yeah, no, he's, he'll be able to win. He's just. He just sees a goal, he just focuses 100% on it and he just goes for it. And nothing really surprised me. All this, what would surprise me at the start was just instantly how good he was doing against, against boxers. When he was firing fans and fans and Artem, it was, it was, it was, it was good and he was doing amazing. But once he got in there with, with pro boxers, it was just, it's just another level. And I think on August 26th, you're gonna, you're gonna see just how, how much, how wrong the odds are and how wrong everyone says that like, Connor's not gonna lay a glove on him. They just, they have no idea. They don't see what we see every day in training. And once the world sees that under the lights, they'll, they'll know that this, this isn't an upset. Like when he knocks out Floyd, everyone's calling an upset. It won't be an upset. It is, it is, it is what it is and it's going to happen. He said he's going to knock him out in four rounds and I 100% believe that from watching all the training, seeing how much hard work he's put in, but I know he's going to do it. I know he's going to knock him out. It's amazing to hear the confidence from, you know, you and, your, and, and the team because, like, the boxing community is openly mocking Connor. They, they make fun of his training, which is what we're looking at right now. They make fun of the fact that he thinks that he can actually land a punch on Floyd. It, 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 you, you say, like, it, that's, you, we never really kind of get that. Like, one guy is just saying, oh, this is going to be over and around, kind of acting like the favorite, and then everyone else around him is laughing at him. It's kind of wild to listen to you say that while the rest of the world is saying he has no chance in hell. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but I can see everyone, I've seen all the, the videos, like David Hay put it out of, of mocking Connor's warm-up, but just look how fluid and loose Connor is in, in, in those videos. Look at any boxer trying, trying to imitate him. Nobody can do it. Nobody can move like he moves. No one can engage individual parts of his body like he can. When he's moving his shoulders, he's just moving his shoulders. It's not like swinging his arms just, just, just haphazardly. He's, he's isolating key areas of his body and he's loosening them up, and that's that's the bit that, that's gonna gonna surprise Floyd. I think it's just how he just won't be able to prepare for Connor. He can't prepare for his movement. He can't prepare for his speed, his timing. Everything is just gonna be too much for Floyd. And um, yeah, Connor's gonna, gonna get the job done. And then, like they say, they they mock him now, but they'll be imitating him in a week. <laughs> um, and come fight night, what is your role? Where will you be? Um, I will be. Uh, I haven't actually got a hundred percent confirmation, but I'm pretty sure I will be in the locker room with Connor, and then I will be ringside. Wow! Get those uh, the iconic Muhammad Ali moment as he stands over uh, <laughs> as he stands over Floyd. Oh my God, I love it. That's um, what I'm after, Ariel. That's what I'm here for. Yes, of course. You, you want the shot. To find me now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. You're gonna have to have some sort of little sign or something. Connor, I'm over here. So that's I need, right. I need him to look at me now. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, for those that don't know, you actually are a combat sports athlete yourself. You've trained under Owen Roddy. You've competed um, in, in, in the amateur ranks. You haven't quite gone pro yet, right? No, not yet. I am, I'm a le- what? I've had 11, 11 amateur fights from 7 and 4. I have a, uh, a silver medal in the IMAF World Championships. So I competed myself. I'm gonna, the Worlds are out in Bahrain in November, so I'm going give, to give them one more shot, and then uh, I'll be turning pro uh, early next year. Wow, so you are 100% going to go pro? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know if, if, if anyone's ever seen me. I'm not exactly the broadest of, uh, of yes. characters, so I'm quite, I'm quite small. So even for 125, I make 125 not a bother. I make it the same day away as I wake up at 125. So I'm going to go over to Asia, and I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go 115. Whoa. See, see what that looks like. That's fine. And will you be so, going with the nickname Yogurty Dave Fogarty? Of course, YDF is a is a household name out in Ireland area. Everyone knows YDF. Is it not true that the the legend Sean Sheehan of Limerick coined that phrase, that nickname? <laughs> there's there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of stories been told about who came up with the name. There's two names in the running for it. There is Sean. Sean Sheehan is adamant that he came up with Yogi Day for Yogi. But um, I train in uh, I train in uh, SPG Charlestown with uh, on a coach on Roddy, but I also train in a in a jiu jitsu club called uh, East Coast Jiu-Jitsu Academy under Professor Dara O'Connell. And one of his brown belts, who actually has his own club in East Coast Jiu-Jitsu Academy, Bray, but, um, Chris Letty, he coined the phrase originally, but I wasn't there to hear it. He came up with a rap and he called me Yogi Day for Ogilvy in that, but I didn't hear it. So he, he has a claim to it, but we'll, we'll give Sean the benefit of the doubt. He, he was the first one to put it out there. So. Oh, my. Sean, we'll give it to Sean. You'd crush his soul if you didn't give him full credit for that. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give him, I'll give it to him. Sean, Sean came up with it. And is that because of the color of your skin? It has a yogurt. Uh, I, uh, I think yogurt. Yeah, yogurt. Ryan to Fogarty. I'm I'm probably the whitest human being as as, a, as going that's going. I don't tan. I go 
white, red, and then white again. So I think it's a combination of a few things. But yeah, it's probably down to me being so pale. And uh, Yogurty is the only word that rhymes with Yogurty. And and what is the rest of the week looking like for you? Do you like? I mean, this is it. This is the stretch drive. Do you have any idea what's on tap for the rest of the week? So Tony's still training away, so I, I still photograph all all his training sessions. Um, he's down to he was doing two a days previously, so tapering down the training a bit, getting the weight down. So I'm just uh, I'm photographing the the whole process. Um, I photograph the the weigh-ins, the media day, his weight cut, and obviously. Uh, fight night so for the whole day I'll be around him when he goes to the event him warming up in the in the locker room and then uh, in knocking out Floyd Mayweather Wow well it has been a lot of fun and I appreciate you squeezing us in Dave you know I know you're very busy and uh, actually kind of was supposed to be on a couple of weeks ago but then got a little too busy actually big time does and typically we, we, <laughs> we ban guests who pull off those stunts but I appreciate you squeezing us in amidst the madness and it's been fun to watch you side by side even on stage alongside Connor flipping the bird things of all I mean it's just been madness uh, and 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 <laughs> I remember, like I said, you sitting next to us in the media room, and now here you are, an international superstar. So congratulations on all the success. Uh, it's great to hear that you've enjoyed this two-month run alongside Team McGregor, and I've enjoyed the uh, the Instagram stories as well. You've been all over the place on social media. Great job. I'll see you out there in Las Vegas. <laughs> thank, you. Uh, thank you, Ariel, and uh, th- thanks for having me on, and uh, make sure everyone follows me on Instagram. It's Ginger Beard Follows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will do that. Thank you, Dave. I got that plug in. I'm on a quest for a blue tick. Still oh, blue tick. good luck with that one. It took I'm me a couple of years. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ariel. Best of luck. Same to you. Appreciate the time. There he is, the thanks. photographer yeah, over at the uh, Mac Life and Conor McGregor's personal photographer for this fight, Yogurty Dave Fogarty, who will be making his pro debut next year, as you just heard. So that is very exciting stuff.